In this video, we're going to look at steps 2, 3, and 4. In the last video, we looked at step 1, which is calculating flight fuel available. This one, we're going to look at estimating the PNR position, planning the flight, and then correcting for that estimated PNR position. Now, as I'm sure you've read in the textbook, the formula to estimate a PNR position is flight fuel available divided by SAR out plus SAR home. We're going to be slightly adjusting this formula to make it a bit more accurate based on the scenario we're doing. You'd be familiar with that there's three scenarios. There's pre-flight scenario and there's two in-flight scenarios. One where we return to an airport that's behind us and another one that we return to an airport in front of us. We're going to make very slight adjustments to the PNR formula to make those estimates a bit more accurate. For the pre-flight scenario, which is scenario one, we choose to remove a climb allowance from the flight fuel available purely for the purposes of making the PNR estimate. Now I'm going to stress this, nothing can change what the flight fuel available is once we've calculated it, but we do take some fuel off that number purely for the purposes of estimating the PNR. It doesn't change what the flight fuel available is, but purely just to estimate it, we can adjust that number. And you'll see when we come to correcting the PNR position, that's going to make a little bit more sense why I'm stressing the flight fuel available doesn't change. Now the reason we're removing a climb allowance for this first scenario is because of the way the formula is designed. We're essentially telling the formula with this amount of fuel, with this flight fuel available, flying at a certain SAR half the time and a different SAR for the other half of the time, how far can we go? Now when we climb out and then cruise to the PNR, the SAR is not super accurate anymore because we're spending quite a lot of the flight at full power burning a lot of fuel climbing and then going back to that regular SAR. And then for the turn, because we're not going to be climbing, that SAR is relatively accurate. So what we do, we remove the extra fuel that we use on the leg out to make that SAR out figure actually fairly accurate. So that way the formula is valid, the formula is correct. So for a pre-flight PNR, and you'll know it's a pre-flight PNR because they'll say you're planning a flight from Adelaide to Perth in this example. The formula is estimated PNR position is the flight fuel available, subtracting 1600 kilos, which is a climb allowance, then divide by the SAR at SAR home. So let's go through the three steps and then we'll plan the flight and then we'll go through the fourth step. The first step is to calculate the flight fuel available. You'd be pretty familiar with this after the last video and after the practice in the textbook, so we won't harp on it too much. What we did, we used the 19,000 kilos of fuel, took off the fixed reserve of 3,300, took off 100 kilos taxi in, and then we divided by 1.1 to remove the variable reserve. That gave us a flight fuel available of 14,181.8 kilos. Step two is to estimate the PNR position. So let's put this in the formula. We have 14,181.8 kilos. We're removing 1,600 kilos, which is that climb allowance, and divided by the SAR out, SAR home. Given this is a normal operations PNR, it's 9.5 out because we're cruising at mark 0.79, and the SAR home is also 9.5 because we're cruising back at 0.79. If this was a depressurized, for example, we'd be using 12.5 on the way back because that's the depressurized SAR. But given this is normal operations, it's just 9.5 plus 9.5. This formula gives us an estimated PNR position of 662 miles from Adelaide. The next thing to do is to plan the flight. Now what I like to do is get the map out here and just start having a look at different things. So I trust that you've got the question in front of you, the Adelaide to Perth normal ops PNR. You can see the route sector winds and temps and all the information on there. So let's have a look at a map together. Drawn on the map, we're going Adelaide to Perth via November 640 to Canby and then Quebec 32. You can see I've highlighted in red because it's a west only track. The yellow plane over the top of Adelaide just represents where we are. So we're currently sitting on the ground at Adelaide planning the flight. We're going to have a look at the route sector winds and temps and I'm just going to draw them in here just so we can all see where they actually are on the map. So the weather zones are represented by the dotted red lines. It was from Melbourne to Candy and Candied Creek and then Creek to Perth. I haven't drawn in Melbourne or Perth because we won't be at those locations. Now the next thing we want to do is have a look at where on the map does our PNR position lie. So we worked out the PNR is roughly 662 miles away from Adelaide. That's going to fall somewhere between Fillet and Flake. 
and it's represented by this blue circle here. So this is where we're going to start thinking, how do we want to start planning this flight? We've got to take into account climb, descent, we also have to take into account the weather changes and where the PNR position lies in relation to those weather changes. So a good starting point would be something like this. Adelaide to top of climb, cruising out to the PNR because we don't quite go into the next weather zone, so there's no en route to weather zone changes. PNR back to top of descent and into Adelaide. Now there's also another rule when you calculate PNRs, that's a very, very important rule. And the rule is that we need what's called a common fix. We need to fly to a waypoint immediately before the PNR and immediately after the PNR, and it's going to be the same waypoint. Now the reason for that is when we go and correct the PNR position, we're going to be calculating actual SGRs, actual specific ground ranges. Now the way we do that, we get a distance and a fuel burn, and that way we can calculate the actual SGR. Now the important thing is that distance has to be the same for the two calculations, otherwise it's not valid. Now my rule with common fixes is I don't want a common fix before the PNR anything less than 30 miles or anything further than 300 miles. So I always have a look on the map and look and go, all right, what's between 30 and 300 miles before my PNR position? Now in this case, the PNR position lies somewhere between fillet and flake. In fact, it lays 129 miles past fillet. This is our estimated PNR position. 129 miles fits nicely between that 30 and 300 mile common fix range. So fillet could be a very, very good common fix in this case. From fillet to the PNR, 129 miles, that works perfectly. So we've ticked all the boxes. We've got the weather changes in there and we decided we're going to use the weather change at top of climb. We won't separate it because of the weather change. Just by coincidence, top of climb and the weather change are roughly the same. So we'll separate the weather at top of climb. We'll then fly out to fillet, which is our common fix. We'll then go to the PNR, come back to fillet, then to top of descent into Adelaide with an approach. So let's draw this up on a flight plan. We'll do the flight plan and then we'll talk about step four. So that's step three complete. We'll move on to step four now. All right, you can see we have the flight plan written up here. Adelaide to top of climb, top of climb to our common fix, which is fillet. Fillet to the PNR, PNR to fillet, then top of descent, Adelaide with an approach. I'm gonna go ahead and do this entire flight plan. I trust by this stage you can do a flight plan fairly comfortably. So I'll do this entire flight plan and then we'll have a chat about step four. All right, the flight plan is done. So step four is to correct the PNR position. What we need to do is we need to add up all the zone fuels and work out what we actually used. And we're going to be comparing that against what we could have used. So the fuel we actually used on this flight plan is 14,050 kilos decimal four. So that was the fuel we used to go from Adelaide out to the PNR and back to Adelaide based off a PNR that's 662 miles away from Adelaide. So I'm going to call that actual flight fuel. And then the flight fuel we could have used, based off the flight fuel available, was 14,181.8. Now remember I talked about flight fuel never changes. Even though we took 1,600 kilos off that, the flight fuel available is always 14,181.8 in this question. So the difference between the two is 131.4 kilos. Now to correct for the PNR position, we need to ask ourselves, did we go too far or do we go not far enough? In this case, we used 14,050 kilos when we could have used 14,181 kilos. So we didn't quite go far enough. We still got fuel left in the tanks. To work out how much further we could go, we used this difference in the flight fuel of 131.4 kilos and divide it by the actual SGR out plus the actual SGR home. Now to get actual SGRs, it's quite simple. There's two different ways of doing it. You can go your fuel flow divided by ground speed. However, we don't write down fuel flows in our flight plan, so we won't use that one. Or you can go zone fuel divided by distance. Now the zone fuel and the distance we use is between the common fix and the PNR and back to the common fix. This is why it's so important to have those 
distances being exactly the same from the common fix to the P9 back to the common fix. So the lines we're looking at and the zone fuel and distances we're looking at is on this line, so a distance of 129 and a zone fuel of 1353 and on this line as well. So I'm going to work out the actual SGRs based off the zone fuel and the distance and I like to write down the actual SGRs over in this ATA column. So to work out the actual SGA out, I'm going to go 1353.7 divided by 129. That gives me 10.49. Two decimal places is always good, and I'll write that in the ATA column. To go SGR home, I'll go 1013.0 divided by 129. That gives me 8.84. So the P and R correction. We are going to go 131.4 divided by 10.49 plus 8.84. That gives us 6.9 nautical miles we need to correct for. Now we've already established that we didn't go far enough. So you're going to be adding this 6.9 onto our original estimate, which was 662. That means the actual P&R is 668 decimal nine nautical miles away from Adelaide. And that's step four done. That's a whole P&R question done. In the next video, we're going to look at in-flight scenarios where we return ahead and return behind. But for this one, pre-flight, that's all done. You can see it's not as daunting as people make it out to be. It's just calculating flight fuel, estimating p &R position, doing what you could consider a normal flight plan, where we just go to a waypoint and turn around, and then make a very small correction at the end.